Greetings, my friends. Happy Wednesday to all of you. So, friends, they are arriving this week. New deposit dates have been confirmed for the fourth round of stimulus checks. As a holiday season arrives, many lawmakers want to help low income households financially. A group of Democrats and Republicans have proposed a plan that would provide monthly stimulus checks. To the American people, my friends, please do me a favor and make sure that you watch until the end of this video. I will be announcing the winner for the $75 Walmart gift card giveaway at the end of this video. So, friends, please make sure that you do stay tuned. State level stimulus is typically much smaller than the checks that were sent out by our federal government during the crisis. Many experts expect smaller checks and more limited eligibility. To receive one will likely blunt the inflationary effects of giving out cash in a time where inflation is still high. During the crisis, people received stimulus checks from the federal government but were unable to spend them as many businesses were closed and events like concerts were not happening, which led to an increase in savings. The latest rounds of stimulus checks may offer some financial relief for families. Who are being pinched by inflation, as well as some peace of mind. State lawmakers across the country are still working to spend down huge surpluses, which has given them the budgetary cushioning to send money back to taxpayers. One potential use for the funds, though with significantly less political reward, would be for states to use the funds to pay back debt or invest into pension funds for state workers. Some states, Like New Jersey and Illinois have struggled to provide adequate funding for their pension funds. A handful of states are still processing and sending out payments. Senate Republican Mitt Romney has introduced the Family Security Act that would send payments of $350 per month to all eligible families with children ages 0 to 5 and $250 per month to those with children ages 6 to 17. The measure would also allow expectant parents to apply for the benefits and would begin four months prior to their child's due date. The maximum monthly payment would be $1,250. Mitt Romney has recently said American families are facing greater financial strain, worsened by the crisis, and marriage and birth rates are at an all time low. On top of that, we have not comprehensively reformed our family support system. In nearly three decades, and our changing economy has left millions of families behind. Mitt Romney's plan calls for the benefit to be reduced by $50 for every $1,000 above income thresholds, $200,000 for single filers, and then $400,000 for joint filers. It would also put work requirements in place for beneficiaries. Romney had first introduced a bill last year. But it failed to gain momentum among lawmakers. It has been revived recently, as many lawmakers continue to want to pass more relief for low income households. The bill also calls for the elimination of state and local tax deductions, a savings of $25.2 billion a year, and getting rid of a head of household filing status, which would save about $16.5 billion, eliminating the child portion of the child independent care credit. Would also cut another $4.7 billion annually. So now, friends, according to the National Retail Federation, despite inflation, consumers are planning to spend around $830 on average on gifts and holiday items. The association also reports a record 196 million Americans shopped in stores and online during Thanksgiving through Cyber Monday. And more are expected to continue during the holiday season. A recent survey shows that 90% of U.S. adults said they are very or somewhat concerned about inflation. Almost 30% of U.S. adults are considering using a buy now, pay later service to cover large purchases this holiday season. Consumers are the main drivers of the U.S. economy, and people will have to wait to see if inflation. Continues into 2023. According to many economists, it gives us a sense of whether the economy is going to continue to grow in 2023 or whether we are likely to see a mild recession. 
That is something many economists are forecasting because of rising interest rates that we have seen all year, as well as a continued high inflation that most Americans are experiencing. So, dear friends, do you think that we will experience a recession in 2023? Please let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Well, my beautiful and dear friends, that is the end of my daily stimulus update video for this Wednesday. Thank you, thank you so much, friends, for joining me here and watching all of the new videos I post. The winner of today's $75 Walmart gift card giveaway is Thomas Harvey. Congratulations, my dear friend. Remember to claim your gift card. Please check your notifications page and send me a message. Or you can message me on my Facebook page. Thank you, my friends, and have a wonderful, blessed week. I think I speak for the entire Democratic Caucus in welcoming this effort from our friends across the aisle. As I mentioned earlier, when it came to the American Rescue Plan for vaccines and vaccinations and cash support for families and help for small businesses and schools, not a single Republican would join us. It's time for us to come together and work on a bipartisan basis. Maybe this is a start. After all, infrastructure is what should unite us. Whether you live in Laurel, Mississippi, or Lakeview section of Chicago, our roads, bridges, our fiber optic networks keep us connected and keep us moving. And as we emerge from this pandemic, it's clear that Americans are ready to get to work, building a stronger country, a healthier country, and a more prosperous country. Sadly, though, the proposal from our Republican friends really fails to meet the once-in-a-generation opportunity test to transform America and make America a winner in the 21st century. At a time when millions of Americans lack access to reliable, efficient transportation and millions more lack access to reliable, high-speed internet, we can't settle for just repaving old roads or filling potholes. We need to invest in this nation's future, put people back to work building a sustainable economic foundation for our children and grandchildren to grow and thrive. We need an infrastructure plan that is a blueprint for the world of tomorrow not just a patchwork quilt focused on yesterday. And the way I see it, we're on the cusp of a world where America owns the clear energy economy, clean energy, energy economy, and exports our union-made electric trucks and cars across the globe, where workers can get to work easily by bus, train, or bike, and working parents don't have to worry about finding a safe and affordable place to leave their kids when they're working. A world where rather than reading about the Mesozoic era in an outdated textbook, a child can throw on a virtual reality headset in the home or classroom and watch in awe as a T-Rex swings its massive tail over it, their, 